I'm here with Sandy McTeer, and Sandy has brought a really cool idea. This is a reverse painting on glass, if I got that right? It is, it is. And you've said even if you can't draw, you can do this. Absolutely. All you need is a line drawing, that's gonna be available on the website, some paint for glass, really nice soft brushes, and then I've made this technique very easy by using a paint pen. <laughs> so let me show you, I added the pattern and I like to get that as close to the plate as I can so double stick tape works wonders. If you just lay it down over, it's a little distorted. So with the paint pen, you always wanna prime those. And I assume if you had text, you'd want to reverse that. Absolutely, but you know what? Stencils are great for that too because you can just flip the stencil on the back and outline with the Perfect. pen. Perfect. Absolutely, outline with the pen. So you're just going to outline all of your design, all the detail, because with reverse painting, you actually add the things like highlights and shading at the very end in normal painting, right? Well, in reverse glass painting, we have to add those things first. So I'm just going to do a few lines to show you. Now I like chunky and big and I like the way that the finished project is outlined in black, but if you decide you don't want the line, you can use a dry erase marker. And then you just wipe oh. it off the front and you have all your pattern on the back painted and ready to go. So once you get the lines onto your glass, you're gonna end up with something that looks like this. Very cool, and actually totally beautiful. You could stop right there. Well, you kind of could. I mean, and you could also personalize it. How fun would that be to personalize this? Personalize this <gasps> the for, ultimate place card. Right, and not just for the Christmas, but you know, birthdays and baby showers and holidays. I mean, you name it. Really, it is, the possibilities are limitless. So again, since we're doing reverse painting, I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow on the end of my liner brush, and I'm gonna paint a tiny little dot in the center of these pods because on the finished project, that is actually what you see first. You see the little black dot that I painted with the paint pen, and then you see yellow. And so the technique with painting on glass too that's really, really important is letting layers dry before you move on to the next one. Because if you try to go over something that's wet, because it's glass, it's gonna slip and slide for you. So I tend to use a heat tool to dry things a lot quicker for me. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of red on the corner. You know, I noticed that it's really thick paint. It has a really nice body to it, and that's for the coverage. And okay. this um, particular has a satin finish, which I like. So I'm picked up red and a little bit of green, and I'm just gonna work that into the corner of the brush to make a little bit of a, a I mean, they make brown, but it's gonna make a burgundy color for me. And so since we're starting with the shading, I'm just gonna pat this in at the base of the petals. This is another thing. If you want to add additional layers of shading and highlighting, let this completely dry, and you can go back and intensify both. So we'll just lay that in. And again, I picked up a little too much green there, but I want these poinsettia petals to be red. As you paint, talk to me about how you're holding and using your okay. brush, because yes. it's different than I'm used to. Okay, so as you'll notice, I kind of have it pulled back just a little bit, and that's to get the pressure off. If I'm up on the chisel, I tend to pull the paint off. With it almost parallel to the surface, I am laying that paint in place. It almost looks like feathering it, it or something. It is, I'm kind of patting it and it's a little tap. So I'm going to wash out that brush, make sure there's no water in it, a little bit of red, a little bit of white, mix those on your palette, and then I'm just gonna kind of skim my paper towel a little bit just to get that excess paint off. And then I'm gonna come right over with the tippy tips of those bristles right on the edge of that petal. I'm gonna pull at an angle. So these are the highlights that you see on the finished project. So nothing hard, nothing precise or exact. It's just that little flick, very light color, so that our highlight shows up on the other side of our petal. So a highlight for people who aren't familiar totally with that idea is? is just a brighter highlight, a brighter spot on that petal. So if it's all red, I wanna have maybe one side that has a little bit lighter color. It looks like maybe the light is hitting that area. I was gonna say, and I can see on the next one yes. where you've completed that, that you have all of those light spots, those places Absolute. where the light is hitting built in. Yes, so, and it looks a little, it looks cool. Pretty, I think it looks pretty cool now. So let me um, go to the holly real quick. I did the same thing, but this time I used green and a touch of red, just to make that green a little bit darker. And just like I did on the poinsettia petals, I just patted that color in, and then this one, I just slid it right up that center 
um, stem there. So you notice I used my finger. If I don't like something, you can wipe it away. You can also use a rubber tool or a little Q-tip with some alcohol to kind of get that back into place. So I'm gonna dip my brush into red, and now I'm gonna go over the yellow dots that I put on the center prior. And you're just adding the next layer because I'm actually looking at this one you have here right. and I can see that you're adding in those darker layers. Absolutely. So now it's time for color and full coverage. And this is super key when painting on glass, like I mentioned before, that you wanna lay the paint on. So my brush is almost parallel to the surface and I'm going to lay that paint on. If I brush it, I'm gonna take most of that paint right off. And notice the little leaf in, or petal inside the big petal, go over both of them at the same time, because when you turn it over, they're gonna be separated because we put that paint pen down first. Oh, and of course, then you've put your highlights on too, so that's another way that it's gonna be visually separated. Absolutely, and, it's, and the shading at the bottom as well is also gonna separate those petals for us. So red on the uh, petals, and like I mentioned before, if you want that to be a little bit more opaque, all you have to do is let it completely dry and then go right Add over it. Add another layer. Absolutely. So will you show us this one that's, you can you turn this one over so we can see this what it here? looks like? Yeah. Yes. So now you can see those really pretty highlights and the um, petal that I went over one time. You have Beautiful. the smaller petal and the big petal. So what are our finishing touches? Okay, so our finishing touches, we're gonna move over to this one where you can see we have the red on all of our petals. And we're gonna mix green, yellow, and white. I wanna make a candy apple green color. And we are going to do exactly like we did on the petals. And, and we're fill going in to the rest. Absolutely. And it's obviously gonna look like this one yes. that's in front of me. Very cool. And it's interesting to me that you're using a lighter green when what you painted with before was a dark green. It's the opposite kind of what you did with the poinsettia. Yes because when you turn that over, you're gonna see that highlight and that shading and that beautiful candy apple green uh, holly leaf. That is so cool. Will you turn this over so we can just yes. take a peek at it? I love it. And it's gonna end up looking like this one here. Mm -hmm. And tell us a little bit about some of these other projects so that you don't just have to do this for Christmas. Absolutely. So flowers, this is probably one of the easiest and one of my favorite, and I have to say one of my best sellers if I do it, <laughs> little polka dots. <laughs> Polka dots Perfect. are so easy. Yes. Yeah, 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 I love it. They look like balloons to me. Yes. I have to say, I love these flowers. I know you're from the South. They feel very sort of Southern Magnolia to me. Yes, yes. They're beautiful. I love Dogwood. Thank you, Sandy, for these projects. I'm excited to get started with some glass painting. Thank you.